Hi, I'm a developer in the Outstory team. This video will show how to configure and generate timing constraints. If you're currently struggling with increased integration complexity or just getting started using Outstar, then this video will show how to configure the execution order of an architecture model. Let's start with an example architecture model. The model consists of five software components, each consisting of one entry point function mapped to an Outstar runnable. We can see the runnables for all the components present in the architecture model when we open Schedule Editor. Schedule Editor also has traceability to the Simulink model. So as you can see, the corresponding Simulink function and its component is highlighted when selecting a partition in Schedule Editor. If we open up one of the model for our components, we can also view the mapping of the selected function to the outstart runnable, meaning Schedule Editor will present all schedulable outstart runnables aggregated in the composition. We can also see the order they will be invoked in during simulation and their data dependencies. Runnable D of software component D and runnable E of software component E both have a data dependency towards each other, where one is of type delay. Dependencies are indicated in the property inspector and graphically with a dotted or straight line. If we modify the order of these runnables, then the type of the dependency will change. Let's look at the impact of the execution order by logging one of the signals. The schedule editor presents the order the simulation engine will invoke the simulink blocks that are mapped to an entry point function. So the question is, does the execution order of an entry point function matter? Let's try by simulating our model. Let's now modify the order between runnable D and runnable E and simulate our model again. So this means that the simulation engine will now invoke the functionality of runnable E first and thereafter the functionality of runnable D. We can now open the data inspector and compare the simulations. So let's select the first run as our baseline and compare it to the second run. So we're interested in comparing the logged signal. The top graph illustrates the retrieved data, and the bottom graph shows how much it differs between the simulations. So as you can see, we got completely different results when modifying the order, meaning the execution order is important for our behavior. I will change back to the original order because that satisfies my requirement. When our model has been verified and validated, we can go ahead and export it. The exported files will consist of a set of ARXML files describing our components and the composition. One of these files will contain a timing model for the composition. The generated file contains a timing model for the VFB view or virtual functional bus view. The timing model contains execution order constraints where runnable A should be executed first, followed by runnable B, runnable C, runnable D, and finally runnable E as we configure it in Schedule Editor. Each executable entity references the component prototype and the runnable it's related to. We can also see that the timing model for the VFB view references our composition. The integrator can later use these constraints to guide the construction of the system to ensure that the simulated behavior is preserved when mapping our runnables to an operating system task. This video covered the configuration of execution order for an architecture model. We showed how to modify the order using Schedule Editor, but also its impact by comparing the simulations between two different runs where we modify the order. And then finally, we showed how to export it in a standardized ARXML format. So please visit the Outstar blog set page on mathworks.com for further videos and documentation to learn more about how you can configure execution order for your Outstar models.